Good evening, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, our friends. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I am very excited. I'm Wayne Lomax, and I'm lead pastor at the Fountain Church. And tonight we're going to begin our uh, midweek time of discussing the Bible with the goal of uh, growing ourselves and also hopefully helping those of you who join us to grow. So again, we're thankful that you're here with us. Uh, tonight. And what we'd like for you to do, first of all, is to make sure that you invite somebody else to be a part of this time as we engage uh, discussion around the Bible. Um, if you have friends or family who you think would benefit from the conversation that we're going to have and the experience that we're going to have, uh, either share the information that you may have received in the newsletter if you're a part of our church. But if you're not uh, a part of our church and you're joining us today, uh, we will uh, make sure that that link is posted uh, for you and that you can share that with others. Um, I just want to open our time with prayer. So just uh, bow with me or uh, pause with me for a moment. Dear God, we ask that you would guide us today as we gather around your word and with each other. Help us to build strong relationships uh, with you. And may we grow in such a way that we also serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, what we're going to do for the next several weeks, uh, we're going to study foundational basic teachings about the Christian faith. And so we're not going to get deep. It's not going to be esoteric. It's not going to be extremely complex, but it's basic uh, principles for Christian training. And I'm really uh, excited to have along, alongside with me for this journey, our executive pastor, Tanika Shepherd, who's also going to be a part mm -hmm of this discussion. It's gonna be a little different than what we're used to because we're gonna have a kind of a dialogue in addition to being kind of didactic. I just wanted to say that word is a little fancy word, but just saying we're gonna teach a little bit and but we're gonna also have a conversation and we want you to be a part of that conversation. And we're going to give you opportunities to also engage us but with your questions, uh, even your comments, insights you may wanna share with us. Uh, there'll be a time for that. So um, let me see, um, before we get started, you may have received a handout that was emailed from our church. And if you did receive a handout, um, it is going to be a guide. We probably will not go point for point down uh, each uh, entry on that handout in sequence. We will use it as a guide. As I said, we're going to have a conversation about these topics and tonight's topic is growth, but use your handout is also a good supplementary piece for you to use after uh, we have concluded our time together uh, each Wednesday night. And um, so I want you to use the handout in that fashion. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself and then we're gonna ask Pastor Shepherd to do the same. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Wayne Lomax and I have served as lead pastor of the Fountain Church since 1997. We founded the ministry in Pembroke Pines and relocated it to the city of Miami Gardens. And we have a, uh, a mission statement for our church where we grow and serve others. And we are really committed to growing and really committed to serving our congregation and our community. I'm originally from North Carolina uh, and I am a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I attended two years at Lincoln University, the historic Lincoln University. So here's a black history tip for you, that Lincoln University was founded in 1854 and is considered to be the first college university in the United States that was uh, created for the education of black people. So I, I was there for two years, then transferred to Carolina, left Carolina, worked for two years for the Environmental Protection Agency and went on from there to study at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary where I earned my Master's of Divinity degree. And right after that, I moved to Florida where I've been here ever since, uh, serving God and serving God's people. So Pastor Shepard, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, uh, thank you, Pastor Lomax. My name is uh, Tanique Shepard. I am originally from Akron, Ohio. And I moved to Columbus, Ohio to go to the Ohio State University. It is the. Um, and so that's where I got my two undergraduate degrees in sociology and African American, African and African American studies. 
and then I moved on to go uh, to attend the Methodist Theological School known as Modesco in Delaware, Ohio. And um, that's where I got my MDiv. And then I uh, attended um, Virginia Union at the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology, which is where I got my, uh, well, earned my <laughs> Doctor of Min Ministry in Global Leadership and um, studying with the Dalit Christian Federation in India. Um, as I said before, I'm from Columbus three months ago, going on four months ago, I moved here to Florida, Southern Florida, to become the executive pastor here at the, um, at the Fountain after spending 20 years at uh, New Salem Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. Um, I do a lot of international work with the Baptist, different Baptist organizations, and I don't want to start naming them. Uh, but I am the president of Baptist Women in North America, and so I do enjoy that. Um, and I'm just excited to be here tonight and talking about the topic for tonight. So I want to invite everyone, if you haven't done so already, please put your name in the chat. Let us know um, that you are here. And uh, throughout tonight, if you have any questions, tap it in the chat. Like, give your feedback. This is a conversation not just between Pastor Lomax and myself, this is also a conversation with you as well. So I'm excited to get started. And if you haven't done so, let us know you're here. Thank you. All right, so um, let's let's kind of get started. And I think we share with you that we're talking about foundational basic um, Christian principles. And so tonight we're, st we're, we're talking about growth. So I'm going to kind of pass the mic to um, Pastor Shepard, let her lead us out in our discussion tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first things first, Pastor, when we talk about growth, I think it's important to set that foundation with a definition. So how do you define growth? Yeah, for, I mean, very simply, uh, Pastor Shepard, first is change. Um, mm -hmm. uh, growth is change. And so there is no growth for us as human beings without change. And I, and I tried to define it uh, on the handout is um, growth is this type of change that helps us meet the future challenges or challenges that we're facing in our life. And so the way I would, would illustrate that in a very simple, simple way, if you have a kid that's a toddler, one of the challenges would be learning to um, go to the bathroom by yourself you know, becoming potty trained. And so we can say that kid has grown when they are capable of sensing that they have to uh, empty their bladder and, and then they can do that independently. And that was, the, that's, all, that's a challenge when it, when it, when it's first, when they're first faced with having to do that. I mean, and there's resistance and there's, you know, wanting to do what you've normally done, but when we can see they can do that independently, Mm -hmm. And we can say that that's growth. And so that you can translate that same type of metaphor into other areas of our life. Absolutely. One of the ways um, when I define growth, I always say you could look at it either in <clears throat> usually in size or in number, you know, numerical growth, um, size growth. And I know a lot of times we're talking tonight about spiritual growth and we'll get into the different types of growth. But when you think about growth, um, you really should think like, where am I seeing it? it, it where do I see um, some sort of like expansion in my life or multiplication in my life or even addition? When you start thinking about numbers, there should be some sort of growth. Intrinsically on the inside, you should, um, like you said, not be the same way. Like if I'm the exact same way I was 10 years ago, yeah. then there should be some sort of change that's happening in our life. Thinking of that as we go a little bit deeper, let's talk about some scriptures that help us to, um, to ground us tonight because it's in Bible study. So what are some scriptures that we can use when we think about growth? Yeah, I, I'm going to start out with some of the teachings of Jesus. Um, you know, Jesus was big on growth. Um, when he engaged his disciples, what we see in the, in the New Testament and, and probably three of the four gospels, he challenges them to follow him. And as a result of following him, he kind of promised them, you know, if you follow me, I'm going to help you to develop into someone that you're not now. I'm going to help you to 
catch men, develop and help, help you be a leader of people. And so that was a place where none of those 12 that he had recruited into his inner circle, none of them were there. They were probably great fishermen, great community people, but they didn't have the ability to lead people. And he said, you follow me, I'm gonna help you to grow. So, and then what Jesus did along the way, he used these teaching tools called parables. One of them was his parables. And so Matthew chapter 13 has uh, several parables. It's maybe four, five, six parables in that chapter itself. And most of them, point towards growth. So there's one that's a parable of the mustard seed that talks about it being very small, but you plant it and it becomes a big bush. And it gives the illustration that, you know, the birds can come and chill out and rest and relax. And then there's uh, the parable of the treasure in the field. It talks about, and that's a parable of sacrifice. In order to grow, there has to be some, some sacrifices. So you have something that you want to be or, or something that you want to do, but you don't have the capacity. And so that parable says that a person saw a treasure in the field and he went and sold everything that he had in order that he might accomplish this area of growth in, in, his, in his own life. And so in the 13th chapter of Matthew, there's several parables that talk about growth. The parable of the net talks about casting it out. At first, it has nothing in it, nothing. One of the most frustrating things about growing is facing the fact that you are not even close, you know, you're not even close, you know, but the, the parable is say, if you cast, put yourself in the right place and you stay there, you stay there, then you can eventually, what you're going to see is great productivity uh, in your life. And so these are some uh, teachings in that particular chapter where Jesus emphasizes not only the importance of growth, but how it is an imperative in the kingdom of God. That's great, Pastor. Um, and as you all are listening to us, you all be, you can definitely add your own scriptures that inspire you. Um, one of the things that, and it's a group of scriptures, Pastor Lomas, that always, it convicts me. And um, I remember years ago, I was reading this and I was like, ah, and when we talk about growth and, and it's, it's a mix of them because in first Peter two and two, he talks about longing for the spiritual milk, you know, be as babies longing as a spiritual milk. I always love that scripture, you know, but the problem I think is that sometimes we stay there. And so then when we get to first Corinthians three and two or Hebrews 12, you, you see the writers of those scriptures saying, you know what, you should be ready for meat, but you're still on milk. You're still like, a baby longing, you know, and you're not ready for the meat. So that means that there's there's not been the growth that there should be. So one of the things I just wanted, you know, as we begin to, as we continue to talk about growth, is what is that that happens right there where sometimes we start on the milk, but then you have people who almost have like this, uh, this addiction to what I call spiritual similac where it's like, we just want things to stay simple, yeah. stay in that baby milk type of thing. And, and can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, but before I do, I want, I want to go back to something you said. You said that sometimes these verses convict you. And Absolutely. So, so I, I, want, I want to know what that means, you know. What, what, is, what does that mean? And I'm sure there's somebody in our audience that, well, what do you mean, Pastor Shepard, about being convicted? Because here you just introduced yourself <laughs> <laughs> As a spiritual giant, you know, you yeah. went to the Ohio State University Absolutely. and you went to the to the uh, Methodist Seminary and then, you know, you have your doctor and you experience conviction. Absolutely. And I think that is an indicator of growth is conviction, because there are some things, you know, um, Paul says when I was like a child, I thought like a child, but then I put away um, childish things. So when you, the conviction comes when I know that I should be more mature in some areas wow. and I'm not yet. And, and, and because I haven't matured in some areas, the, my reactions to things aren't like they should. And so when I look back, I'm like, you should have did better in this because you should have grown past this by now. And so that's what I talk about the conviction that in some areas I may be on the meat track, but then in some areas, you know, I'm still in the baby stuff and, and God is like come out of that and, and continue to mature and grow in these areas. Wow, so, now, so that's, that's powerful because I think this whole issue of conviction, particularly in say in your life and in my life, we would be considered 
I guess, relatively spiritually mature. People would look to us to try to help them in their spiritual lives. But we also have areas in our life where we need to grow. And when there is no conviction, you have no awareness that you need to grow in your life. You've lost the ability to be self-aware. And what happens is that you can easily detect the flaws in other people's lives and the spiritual deficits, and you are totally oblivious to the areas that you, that you need to grow. And so that's important for growth, that we always retain the, well, I would say this, that we allow the Holy Spirit. Can we say that in Bible study? We yes. allow, <laughs> okay, we allow the Holy Spirit to convict us in areas where we need to grow. So you, you had asked a question about this whole area of when, um, when we haven't grown, when we've mm -hmm. become stuck. And one of the things that's easy to do is to stay in the same place as a believer because it is very uncomfortable to grow because you have to admit that what you did previously is not sufficient for the present or the future. And so I'll go back, I'll go back to the, um, the potty training illustration. Mm -hmm. In order for a kid to be potty trained, he has to buy into the fact that what he or she has been used to doing for this first 12 to 18 to 24 months is no longer adequate, is no longer acceptable. And, and you really have to get to the point where you have to say, this is no longer acceptable for me. And so in the Christian church, it's easy for us to get to a certain place and never uh, say to ourselves, it's no longer acceptable for me to be here. I have to move beyond this. And most of us look at that as being going into some deep place, but it's really that, that growth is really mastering the very simple, practical principles of the faith. I, I tell you, try to pray every day. See how easy that, I mean, sincerely have a time with God every day and see how easy that is. It's not an easy thing to do. It's a very difficult discipline in order to have in your life. But those are the practices um, that help us to grow. Mm -hmm. thank, um, thank you, Pastor Lomax. A couple of the things I'm seeing some links here that we're, as we're talking, like you said, the potty training, and I talked about the, the spiritual simulac. And so I think one of the things is, how does a person know that they're growing? How do I know, you know, because I could think, I, I think about doing youth ministry for almost 20 years, and sometimes uh, it work with young people, um, especially younger, younger people, they think that they're older than they are, more mature than they they are so how I think if we talk a little bit about how a, some indicators of growth um, and we talked about that earlier but it is easy to say the same prayers and hope you know to read the same scripture to kind of do the same things and then that growth gets stuck or mm -hmm. I'm not as mature as I think I am I'm getting older but I don't I'm not getting more spiritually mature yeah you know, um, I'm a sports guy. You know, I love sports. And sometimes in the sports arena, um, particularly, you know, in some of those teams in the Big Ten, like you have athletes who are like really great. <laughs> I see it. There was a dig right there. It's not in the ACC, but you have <laughs> athletes who are really, really great. I mean, they can catch, they can throw. But sometimes their behavior is not commensurate with their talent, you know, how they handle situations. And so for us, growth is not really in the area of talent. What, I mean, that's not the main thing, the whether you become so great at doing something. Growth is when you become better at being who God wants you to be. And most of us, we, we get stuck because wow. we get so focused on the doing. You know, I want to be a better preacher. But can I be a better person? You know, mm. that, that's, that's where the challenge is. Or, and mm -hmm. so I think that we know that we're growing when the things that used to anger us so quickly mm -hmm. don't anger us as much or at all. Mm -hmm. Or we are growing when we can receive feedback. Can I give another word? Can I call it criticism? Yes, please do. Yeah, we, we can receive criticism without having to give criticism in return. 
-hmm. So you, you can criticize me or give me feedback and I don't feel the need to be defensive and criticize you as my response to your feedback to me. So these are areas of growth. I think another area of growth is where we can give of ourselves without having an expectation of receiving from those who we gave to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm going to add a couple more. And I love what you said about receiving criticism and not having to criticize back. One of the things I think that is a major area of growth is that <clears throat> when, pe when you don't have to announce that you're growing, because sometimes people grow and then they say, you know what, I'm glad I've grown because <laughs> if I hadn't grown, this is what I would be doing. That's but when you are, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you grow, you don't have to announce the growth. Just let people experience it. Let other people announce your growth yeah. and, and comment on your growth. Because you don't have to tell us what you would have done in the past and what I could have done. But I, I think that's definitely one of them. And for me, when you grow, you become a better listener. Yes. I, I, you, 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 you really become a better listener. Um, and I think that's, that's a major indicator because, you know, we want to be able, like you said, can we say this in Bible study? Absolutely. Part of spiritual growth is being able to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And it's hard to be able to listen to God when you can't listen to people. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I think that can really help people in their growth is work on listening skills, like work on <laughs> the communication skills that helps people in leadership and in life. But but I, I, I would just add those two things that it's um, and the last one I would say is being willing um, to do those things that you don't feel like doing. And you talked about reading the Bible earlier. Um, <clears throat> And being able to get that, you know, that, that, uh, I don't, I don't know if it's, it, it, it probably should be. And can you talk about that, that daily type of eating? Because when, when we talked about earlier, the, the, the physical food you need every day, you need that nourishment, you need, um, like you said, you shouldn't still need help on the potty, like you should get potty trained, you should learn to walk, those are indicators of growth. Can you, um, what, how do you see that when you think about, um, just thinking about what I used to be and now what I'm can be now, but how do I get into a routine and really, you know, get boot, get a boost in my growth? Yeah, can I start out by saying that it's not easy? Mm -hmm. It Me is, yeah, it, it, it is, it, you know, when I was first became a Christian, you know, I was told to do all of these things, read your Bible, say your prayers, fast, um, you know, deny yourself, go to Bible study, come to church, go to all the services, um, memorize scripture, have a quiet time, daily devotional time, feed the sick, and visit the hungry. And you know, <laughs> I had to do all of that. You know, it's all the things that you're I'm told to do. <laughs> yeah. And so you try to, you try, and so what, what happens is that you get into this, this thing of doing, doing all these things, and you, and you don't really grow. You just become a really good doer. Mm. But the growth. But, and it's because it's easier to, to go and do all these things. It's easy to sit up in a Bible study and not learn anything and go to Bible study every week, every week, every week at church and not grow. Because what this growth thing is all about, it's about admitting the deficiency and then engaging ourselves in the rig, the rigor. Mm -hmm of sticking with it. It's the discipline of sticking with it over and over and over. So I'll give you a prime, a prime example. Man, if you go back to 1999, 2000, Tom Brady is getting uh, this, he goes to the combine. And so this guy runs the slowest, the slowest 40. I mean, he doesn't even look like an, a pro athlete. He is drafted 199th. Sure, he had talent. But where he has bested all his competitors is how he has grown internally in terms of an athlete and a professional athlete. And so it's these little disciplines that he commits himself to over and over, and he's still doing them now. And so for us, I'll talk about it on a spiritual plane. Like for me, one of the things that I do 
professionally is read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I read the Bible because I have to preach and come on YouTube and do Bible study, you know? So, so I read the Bible so that I will seem like I know what I'm talking about. But it's easier to know what I'm talking about in the Bible mm -hmm. than it is to actually read that Bible and say, well, how do I go through the process of becoming a loving person rather than teaching about mm -hmm. being a loving person, mm -hmm. which is much more difficult. Um, and so the process is the routine. So, um, and you don't need a whole lots of scriptures. If I want to be a loving person, when you're, when, when you're someone who you're in a relationship with really pushes that button. Okay. So mm -hmm. now it's going to become, become an opportunity to see where you are. And sometimes you're going to fail. You're going to fail. So I'm going to say what these failures look like. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to curse the person out. You shouldn't. Absolutely. And I know there's somebody on YouTube right now that Absolutely. knows that you're talking about me, Pastor Lomax, or sometimes <laughs> you're going to shut down. You're going to, you're, yeah. going to shut, you're not going to curse them out. You're going to shut down and say, I'm, I'm not talking to you. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to text you, call you. I'm not going to speak to you. I'm just shutting down. I'm not engaging. Or you may withhold a kindness, but many times that's a reflection of our growth because we're saying that I'm gonna love you to the degree that you show love to me. But the love that the Bible talks about, talks about us being able to love even when we are not being loved ourselves. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy, it's a hard thing to do. So that's incremental. It's an incre incremental and it's learned over time. Absolutely. Um, I want to remind everybody of two things as we're talking and having this conversation. Number one is that if you look in the chat, you'll see a link to the outline today and some great scriptures and things that will help you in your own spiritual growth. Um, and then also be sure to um, put your questions in the chat and let us know. Um, talk back to us because you're, you're in this conversation with us. <clears throat> That's right. Pastor Max, you said something that I think is so important and you started talking when you when you were talking it really I would say it convicted me because we won't get back on that topic of conviction <laughs> but it is something to be said about growth and I and I hope that as people put things in the chat please put your questions in the chat about growth no question is too um too big or too small um <clears throat> One of the things is that sometimes when we talk about growing, we look for a list of things to do. You know, the, here, here's a to-do list. Here's, here's some stuff that I, that I have to do. And I always say growing is it's like serving. It's not something that you have to do. We get to do it. As you said earlier, it helps us to become the people God created us to be. And um, one of those things when you talk about <laughs> Some things that convictions about growth, I do think it's one of the major things is the way we treat people. Uh, we mentioned it earlier, but you, we should, and this is an issue, I think, among Christians and in Christianity, some people call it Christendom, uh, churchdom, is that a lot of times it seems like Christians can be the most hateful people. And people who call themselves Christians can have the greatest amount of immaturity um, and just meanness and judgment um, and be so judgmental. And so I think that is one of those things that people once again should, and I hope everybody writes if you're writing notes, people should be able to experience my spiritual growth. They should be able to experience the fact that I'm communing with God, that I'm that I'm in that I know the Lord, that I believe in Jesus, and that is something that should grow over time. We shouldn't become more mean over time. We should become <laughs> more loving over time. Yes. Well, you know, that's a what you've just touched on is a real challenging issue because the church, the church has done marvelous things. I mean, the universities, uh, many universities across this world were started by the church. Harvard mm -hmm. started by, you know, the church, you know, John Harvard was a preacher. Um, most of the universities in Europe um, that we consider the renowned universities, the oldest ones were established to train ministers. Mm -hmm. uh, churches have 
establish hospitals, um, nursing homes, orphanages. Um, some of the greatest scientists have been Christians who have delved deep into some of the problems that we were having, whether it's medically or uh, in terms of how we, we, we understand the environment. Mm -hmm. um, some of the most compassionate things that have been done, uh, issues of, on the death penalty, you know, what the position is on the death penalty. Many Christians have championed causes. That's, that's one side of the church, but there's another side of the church that has done tremendous damage to human beings. I read an article today, a, a chapter today in um, Stephen O's book, um, The Fires of Jubilee, which is a biography of Nat Turner. And it talked about Christians praying that God would deliver them from sin and from drinking and carousing and all that, but would not dare pray to the same God to deliver them from slavery. Mm you know, and so the church bears some responsibility, not only in the institution of slavery, but the lingering effects of that institution. And if you, and if you, and, and so, but it's not only that, the church bears some responsibility in how it has interpreted scripture to marginalize people. And so on the one hand, we say that God loves everybody and all people are evil, I mean, equal, but women were and still are not treated equally yep. in the context of the church. And I'll tell you how damaging this is. It's so damaging. It's so damaging that those of us who are treated that way began to believe that the way we were treated is correct. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize that the treatment that we are experiencing is mistreatment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, mm. Yeah. So, so I would say that, you know, just in terms of growing, we grow as individuals, but we also have to grow as institutions mm -hmm. where our institutions are, it reflect the same kind of love that Jesus talked about. So, uh -huh. so let me just, can I, before you, can I just quote a scripture? So John, Absolutely. John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus says this, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is a high measuring, it's a high standard that you love one another. So we think it's preaching and going to Bible study and being able to quote a hundred verses and singing real great. But by this singular metric, this is the litmus test that people will know that you're my disciples. What is your issue? What is your position on how police treat individuals in the minority community? Do they do that in a loving way or should it be practicing policy? And do, are you in favor of the practices and policies that demonstrate a loving approach to policing. Mm -hmm. What's your position on this big gap between the rich and the poor? It's not a lack of money, it's a distribution of it. Mm -hmm. And to, to not distribute or pay people or make sure people have enough money to provide for themselves is an unloving thing. And the church has to function in a way on the side of loving people. Well, let me get off that because I'll be in there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we can definitely transition because this is a great time to start talking about types of growth because you indicated several types of growth. I know I talked about loving people um, as part of our spiritual growth, which is what you said. Like you know, somebody's a disciple by how they love, like not by how they preach, not by how they pray, but how they love. And so one of the things um, we can walk away asking ourselves is how are people experiencing my relationship with God? Because sometimes we think it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, like me and God, but the cross is also this way, which yeah. is horizontal, me and others. So how are people experiencing my relationship with God? Um, it's more than a personal thing because it becomes a community experience when you think about it. Um, but I do want us to start talking about what are what are some types of growth? We, we talked a little bit about spiritual growth, but Pastor Lomax, let's talk about some some types of growth that we can have. Yeah, and, and so I, 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 you know, and I, I want to preface this by saying, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, whether you eat or drink mm -hmm. or whatever you do, 
do all to the glory of God. And so this is saying that every area of our lives should fall under the, let's say the Lordship of Jesus Christ or the leadership of Jesus Christ. And so to ask ourselves, what would Jesus, what would Jesus do? And sometimes a good question, but sometimes a better question is what would Jesus have me to do? Amen. That's <laughs> you know? yes. Jesus might do something different, <laughs> you know, but what would Jesus have, have me to do? Mm. And so, yeah. um, and so when, when we, when we ask that question, um, that means that this means all of our life, everything in our life falls under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So then we have a need to grow in every area of our life. So I, I, I need to grow financially. Mm -hmm. And so that may mean that I need to grow into, I need to grow to be a, a good manager, mm -hmm. a good caretaker of what God gives to me. We would not all grow to be billionaires. Mm -hmm. We like to, but we won't be that. But what we can do is to try to manage, to take care of what God has given to us in a, in a, in a godly way, in a way that would please God. So that, that's an area, that's an area of growth uh, that you cannot ignore because it's connected to who we are spiritually. Then relational growth. I think for me, and I would talk a little bit transparent about this. I mean, I think, you know, that's been the one area that I can see more growth in my life mm -hmm. uh, because I, I probably have been more of a wreck relationally. Very early in the ministry, I had a, a, a friend of mine. He's a, still a friend of mine. He used to be a part of our church. He left the church. But he, he told me, we were out visiting the sick. We were out visiting the sick. And he told me, he said, you know, you don't let anybody get close to you. Mm. And so I said to him, I said, well, you're close to me. <laughs> you ride in my car. You know, you're close to the, over there in the passenger seat. And so he, he said, no, no. He said, you let persons get so close but then that's as far as you're going to let him in. Mm. And so, you know, I just kind of blew him off though. You know, I didn't pay much attention and we're still friends to this day. And so it wasn't, wasn't long ago uh, before the pandemic, we went out to lunch and I said, you remember when you told me that? Because at, at, after a certain point in time, I began to recognize that there was some truth in, in what he was saying and that, you know, I had these relational deficits uh, that I had. And so, you know, one of the things that's easy to do as a preacher is to use people just to get some work done. You know, mm -hmm. you know, will you leave this and do that and uh, and not care about the person? You know, so mm -hmm. so it's relationship growth. So that's 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 a type of emotional growth. Mm -hmm. And I think in the church we have a lot of there's a lot of growth that's needed in that area. Um, it's a lot of emotional unhealthiness in the church because we use scriptures and worship services to substitute for emotional development. Mm -hmm. so we, just, we, just mm -hmm. quote, we just quote a verse or come to church and lift our hands and all that kind of stuff. But, but, but truly we got some emotional stuff going on. You know, if, if, your, if your parents, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you had stuff, trauma going on in your childhood, <sighs> Gee. you'll spend a good part of, a good part of your adult life trying to work through that stuff absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah <laughs> absolutely. yeah so that's so, so i share one and so i'll be a little transparent uh my wife and i were talking about this the other day so you know so like when i was like seven years old right mm -hmm. had i had this sexual assault uh, experience where I was sexually assaulted at seven years of age, man. Wow. And so my wife and I were talking about it the other day and I was telling her what happened in this one spot in our yard mm -hmm. uh, was growing up. So they had another injury that took place at that same spot. But it took years, years of, I mean, trying to work through, not publicly, and publicly I could put on a good act you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. privately, oh man, it was like, oh boy, this life is, boy, it's, it's rough. And so you, and, but it comes out publicly too, but you have to work through these things. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, so that's, that's growing to meet the challenges that you're facing. So the, 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 the consequences 
and the residuals of that sexual assault stayed with me and I had to grow to meet the challenges that that experience brought. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that, Pastor Lomax. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that, and, and thank you for being so transparent that, as you said, sometimes when we experience trauma in our childhood, many times we stay there. Like it's something about that's where we stop. And this is a great um, time to really let people know that counseling is a great thing. Like you don't have to work through it by yourself. It is a process, but it is a great thing. I know my counselors has helped me through a lot of childhood trauma that I did not realize when we said, when you talk about being stuck, like on the outside you're growing, but on the inside you're still the child in that yeah. place, in that moment, and you're still there. And people don't even know you're still there until something happens that triggers that man. I'm still, I'm still right there. And I will name that it has taken years of counseling that I will probably, I mean, I, I'll say out loud that has helped me in my own traumatic situations. You know, growing up without. Um, without a lot, like we didn't have a lot. I didn't know, like many people, I didn't know I was poor until I grew up. And so there were things that were said to me, you know, um, growing up where you feel unwanted and we will act out of our trauma if we don't get help. And we don't even, like I said before, know that's where we're going. And so I thank you once again for sharing that. Um, I would name too, um, I know you talked about relational growth and spiritual growth. One mm -hmm. of the other types of growth is financial growth. And I think yeah. that when I, when I was talking about not having a lot, many times people who don't have a lot growing up, when we get some money, we just start spending money. And so I didn't even know in my early 20s, I was in even early 30s. There's financial decisions I made because nobody taught me about money. And yeah. so, you know, I had to grow up and say, no, 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 <laughs> you can't continue to live like that. And just because you were younger and nobody taught you about that. And part of the thing about growing up without much and people are quick to judge like people who don't have a lot because when they get money, we spend it. Yeah. Well, you don't have the delayed gratification because your whole life is delayed gratification. Yeah. So when you finally get something, you spend it. But that's something that really um, God has helped me to be, I won't just say deliver from, because it's, it's, it's more of a maturity factor to relearn about finances, relearn about money and relearn about what it means to be a good steward or caretaker of what God has given me. And I know that that's, that's a, that's a process. So we talked about the financial process and I'll say another one transparently has been, especially during COVID, um, you know, people talk about the COVID-15. I think I gained like the COVID-15 and took some other people's too. Um, and so even moving, it's been, it's you know, you know, you lost me there. I said, COVID-15, I said, is that another yeah. strain we, or what is that? No, I mean, we, not okay. COVID-19, okay. it's COVID-15. All right. So it's okay. been like the COVID-30 or whatever. I got you, I got you. But relearning um, how to be um, just, uh, you know, I've had a mentor and she's been helping me be, um, just, just think about my food and think about every decision, you know, that I eat, uh, every, you know, getting up and walking when I don't feel like or exercising. These are things that, and I named that because there's a lot of spiritually mature people who are out of shape or who are killing their bodies. Yeah. They're feeding their spirits and we're killing our bodies. So those are areas of spirit of maturity too that are that are very important. But I think in the conversations that we often have um, among Christians get left out too often. Yeah, yeah. Well, the church is not a place where you can be transparent about the areas that you need to grow. Testimonies in the church are only about usually triumph. Mm -hmm. Testimonies are not uh, designed to help us share life. We only share the triumphant side of life. And but sometimes the testimony needs to be, you know, hey, y'all, I'm still in the same place and um, I've been struggling with it. And, you know, I'm glad that I have a Christian family where I can honestly share where I am. I'm not asking for pity or sympathy. I'm not even asking for anyone's help, but I just asking for your prayers because I'm still struggling with this particular area. 
And I think one of the things that's important for growth, and because I want to, I, I really want tonight to de um, sanct, <laughs> I want to take the, the saintness out of this. Yes. To be human is to be flawed. Absolutely. Be, yeah. And to be flawed means that you're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And the mistakes that you make will most likely be objectionable to other people who are also mm -hmm. making mistakes, but have not matured to the place to where they can understand that we're all a part of the human family and we're all flawed. And you, we will never grow to the place to where we're flawless. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pastor, let's talk a little bit, and you just got on it, about some of these, because we talked about some of our issues, that, you know, that we've struggled with. But I think what happens sometimes is people can really be on a path of growth. And then like they're growing, and then they hit that, that plane. And then sometimes they hit that downward little, like, yeah, yeah. So can we talk about some, <laughs> like you think you're moving, <laughs> but you're not growing like you're moving but you're not growing along so can you talk I think we should talk like uh, just share uh, just from our experience or our observations some of those hindrances to growth yeah um and Pastor Shepard that's that's really great that you would bring that up and um to our audience um if you have questions make sure you put those questions in because we're getting ready to pause in a minute and we want to want to address those questions, but I, I'm gonna start with hindrances to growth. And I'm gonna start with, well, first I'm gonna say, I'm gonna preface it with this. All of the hindrances can be addressed and overcome to some degree, some totally, some partially, some we will be working on maybe all of our life and not to work on them would make it worse. But we will never maybe totally overcome it, but all of them can be addressed. And so one of the things that's a hindrance to growth is sometimes, I'm gonna start here, genetics. Mm. Genetics, you know, who you are genetically. We don't get to choose that. And we may come out of the womb with certain predispositions towards things. Mm. And it's just mm -hmm. who, we, it's who we are. Yeah. And, you know, you can try to shake it off uh, or whatever, but it's who you are and you have to be willing to continue to work on that area of who you are all of your life. And so, um, so I would say that's the first um, hindrance and impediment to growth. I want to go with another one, environment, mm. the environment in which you were shaped. Of the environment in which we are shaped very early, early on in our lives creates certain ways of thinking and viewing the world. Amen. And we don't know that the way that we're viewing the world is contrary to our own personal development and growth and progress in life and advancement in life because it seems correct to us. We have nothing to compare it to. And when we meet something that's different, that may be better for us, we're going to reject it initially. And so environment, um, environment is, can be a hindrance. Mm -hmm. And so we have to overcome what we've learned from the environment in which we, we, we've come up in. And so I'm going to name one more. Mm -hmm. People. <laughs> <laughs> People, Explain that a little fast. People, people. So it can start with your parents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I love my dad. My, my wife told me the other day, I said, you know, if I died and go to heaven, who you think be the first person I'd want to see? And she said, you want to see your dad. And she's right. But my dad and I didn't have a good relationship most of our life. <laughs> I have so much respect and admiration for him that I learned later on in, in life, you know, but, um, but the way, the way he shaped me uh, early on was that he, he kind of dealt with me by tearing me down all the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I had to, at some point, believe that I am able 
mm. and that I am capable and that I do have value and that those messages of you don't or you can't are not valid for me. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, and I could learn, I know what he was trying to do, but I have to say he was wrong on that. And so that, that can be a hindrance because my pastor told me it's hard to call your parents a liar. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It, it's hard wow. to say that they're wrong. So those mm. are just three that I would start with, uh, Pastor Shepard, and talking about can be hindrances. They're hundreds, but. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you named the whole nature versus nurture thing, because it really is nature and nurture. It's both. <laughs> it's both. And as you said, environment, I, I want to start out with an add three. But my first one is actually what you said. When you talk about environment, I would name the people that we're surrounding. We choose to surround ourselves with our friendship circles. Oh, yeah. um, you know, many of us get into a point where we want to grow, but we want to grow by committee. This is what, hey, guys, I want to grow. We're going to grow this way. And the people that we're hanging around may say, well, that's not, no, we don't want to do that. Or they may criticize and say, well, what are you trying to do? Who do you, you know, people are, you know, who do you think you are? What are you trying, you know? And so when we're trying to come up out of where we have been and get to where God is calling us to, one of the biggest hindrance can be the people who are surrounding us, who, who don't want to go to that next level. They don't want to go with us and so we have to be willing to leave them where they are don't criticize them don't <laughs> you know yeah. but sometimes growth by um just that friendship circle it, it's not going to happen and we just have to be willing to uh kind of kind of let people be and and go to that next level so I, that would be one i think is the people we surround ourselves with and i think a helpful piece is accountability you talk about we're, you know we're going to talk about growth groups in the coming week but that is so important is to be in a community with people mm -hmm. who who also want to grow who also want to get there um i would say the second thing is is some the last two are some internally and one is our comfort zone. As I said uh, at the beginning, what has been working, we want to keep working. And we could get so comfortable with where we are that it ends up hindering us. And, it, and it's hard because sometimes, you know, I think when I look at my own life, so I'll speak out of my own conviction, I've, you get to a place of growth where you kind of build, I always say we turn, um, you know, hotels into homes. And so you weren't supposed to stay here. You was <laughs> for a long period. You weren't supposed yeah. to live here. It was a, it was a pause point. It yeah. wasn't a permanent place. But our pausing points become permanent places where we don't keep pressing on. Mm -hmm. and, and it's so easy to do. And one of the easiest times to do it. This is my third one is during busy times. So I think one of the hindrances to growth in my own life, and I see it in other people, especially in church and in ministry, is the busyness. Yeah. So. You don't think that ministry or participation in ministry can actually hinder it. But just because we're doing things for God doesn't mean we're doing things with God. And so I think that's one thing that continues to convict me. My schedule can be so packed that I didn't take enough time to be with God. And it's, I tell people it's not going to happen unless it's a priority. Yeah. You know, it has to be prioritized, but I, I just continue to speak because I always think there's somebody listening who's so busy and you may think you're too busy to spend time with God, but I just speak to you right now that that's not true, that you can continue to grow. And I promise you, if you prioritize it, put it on your calendar, um, you know, and I and I know we talked about hindrances. So I'll say one of the things that helps with all of it is accountability, is letting people in to speak to our lives and letting people um, be our accountability partners in that process. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I concur with that. I concur with that. Well, let's see. Do we have any questions? Yes, I don't. I don't see any questions just yet, but we want to continue okay. to invite people. If you have any question at all about growth, thinking about your own life, it's not too late. You can tap it in the chat and type it in the chat and ask it um, even now. Um, as they do that, Pastor, I know I talked about accountability and putting things on a calendar. Can you t um, do you have anything that's helped you to grow as you've um, been uh yeah. Or to help overcome those hindrances. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the things that help has help, that have helped me to grow, the, the number one thing, you know, 
and it's not structure and it's it's becoming a more honest person mm, um, yeah. being willing to um, look yourself s- square in the eye and and disregard the opinions of others in this regard in terms of where you really are and then embrace the truth about mm-hmm. where you are that's the first part embrace the truth and then ask yourself what is it that I'm willing to do about this mm. so, you know here's a, here's a strange thing about life is that we want people to accept us and I'm going to use this the way we are for who I am mm-hmm. who I am but people don't have to do that because you could be too much <laughs> You know, too, you could be too much. You're unwilling to grow and to change. And, and it's not the obligation of other people to do that. And so partnerships, whether it's a business partnership, whether you teach on a team, mm-hmm. um, you, your teammates don't have to, in sports, your teammates don't have to accept you if you can't catch the ball. Absolutely not. You know, it, it, as a person, but as a part of the team, no. And so we have to look ourselves straight in the eye and say, well, what, what do I need to do? And I've had to do that. I've had to do that in a very, it's, it's been kind of painful mm-hmm. to do that um, because it, it, what it requires is that you grow up and face yourself. Wow. You get to a place you can't blame anybody else. You can't put it on what happened to me. I can't blame what happened to me at seven years of age or at mm-hmm. 10 years of age. I can't blame any of that stuff. I have to take total responsibility mm-hmm. for who I am as a person. Wow, Pastor, I know we're about to uh, I know we're about to close, but one of the things you just said really um, hit me in a way because I think a lot of times we pray for things and the reality is we're not mature enough to have them. You know, yeah. not ready for what we're even praying for. And one of the things God convicted me last year, 2020, I didn't know I was going to move <laughs> away here, but it was this prepare for what you pray for. Mm-hmm. And um, that's a part of growth. We want things that we simply aren't mature enough to have just yet. And, and part of growing and allowing people, like you said, sometimes it's so easy to say, well, this is who I am. They got to accept me for who I am. That's right in some sense. Yeah. But if you're talking about an area of maturity and what you're talking about is you're just a rude person, that's not okay. And I remember I used to be one of those people who just said stuff off the brain or I said stuff in a way that's just very harsh when I think back because I said, you know, the truth hurts. So I just going to tell you the truth, but that that's childish. That that's 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 immaturity as we grow um we have to you know we don't have to but I think one of the things we should do as we're praying for things to sometimes think like Lord am I ready for what I'm praying for God am I ready for for what I keep asking you for and how can I get ready how can I grow and prepare my spirit in my life in a way that I can go to that next level and and receive those things because it's almost like money if you're financially immature giving you a million dollars is just a setup to have you squander that million dollars. But if I'm really preparing my life for what I believe God has for me, I will do what I need to do to prepare for that thing and allow the accountability and it may be the coaching, uh, whatever Mm -hmm. that thing is. Um, Because some of us, we need coaches. We need people that's just going to say, here's how you get along. Um, We will let those things into our life. Uh, we didn't have any questions that I see. I don't know if we had any questions, but as we prepare to leave, Pastor, I'm going to leave it, leave it to you to give us uh, your final words and maybe to set up for next week, because I hope everybody joins us next week as well. Yeah, well, um, there's a verse in the Bible, because sometimes we feel like we can't go any further. I can't do any more. I've tried. I'm still stuck in the same place. But I want to encourage you today, because there's a, a verse in Second uh, Peter Uh, chapter one, verse three, and it says, with God's divine power, he has given us everything that we need for life and godliness uh, through the knowledge of him who has called us um, by his own glory and goodness. So so you you have it intrinsically. You may need to strengthen it. You may need to dig it up, but you have from God everything you need to begin to grow and then as you grow, I want to say this to you. There's a, another verse that says this. It's in uh, uh, first, Second Peter chapter 3.18, grow in grace. Mm-hmm. Grow in grace. 
growing grace and in knowledge. And so this grace means give yourself some slack. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your teammates may not give you any slack, uh, but you always know you're on a journey. <clears throat> you're in a process and you're working on it. Give yourself, don't beat yourself up. Um, grow yourself up. Don't beat yourself up. Grow yourself up. Growing That's grace. Good. Amen. And the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so there's a reason that we grow because we grow so that we can serve and that our service will have meaning. We can, we can abort the value of our service hmm. if we have not grown. Wow. I'll talk, talk about that next week. Amen. So, uh, so I, I think that uh, time is up. Uh, Pastor, yes. anything before we go? Anything? Anything? What? Um, well, the, the big thing is, please join us next week. And if we have homework, it is this. Invite others to join us in this conversation. You could drop it on Facebook and on um, Instagram. We'll be sharing on our social media links to how you can join us next week. But if you have homework, it is this. Please join us um, and bring somebody, share it with somebody and, and, and join the conversation uh, because we definitely want you. So thank you for everybody who was um, dropping it in the chat. Um, and thank you. Oh, somebody, um, Sister Shahid, she talked about having a consistent devotional time. And that, I just want to uh, congratulate you on that. And, and just That's the great. ideas. So this in the chat, we want to be able to share our different ideas, things that have helped us to grow yeah. awesome. during this time. So we, we appreciate you sharing that, sis. Um, and we appreciate everybody for joining us. And we hope to see you next week. Remember, invite somebody else and let's have a conversation. Yeah, God bless you and good night.